Hello there, welcome to the class. In the previous classes, you had studied about light, you had studied about some natural phenomena. In this class and the next few classes, we will look towards the sky, we will study about the moon, the stars and the various objects in the solar system. So, let us get started. If you look at the night sky, you see how beautiful and mesmerizing it is. You see a lot of twinkling stars, you see the moon, you also see objects that are bright but do not twinkle. These are identified as the planets. If you were lucky, you would have seen shooting stars also. These objects are called celestial objects. Let us now see what these celestial objects are. A celestial object is any natural object or formation in the sky. The moon, the stars, the sun are all celestial objects. Now, here is a question for you. Can we consider aeroplanes and birds as celestial objects? Why? Think about it. The study of the celestial objects and phenomena is called astronomy and scientists who study astronomy are called astronomers. Astronomy is a subject that is as old as the human civilization itself. Early human beings looked up and marveled at the wonderful starry sky. As human beings evolved, our understanding of the nature and the objects around us also evolved. For example, our ancestors observed that the position of the sun in the sky repeats itself once every 360 days approximately. This led to the idea that an year is approximately 365 days long. The Babylonians who are one of the ancient civilizations considered their year to be 360 days long. The roots of Indian astronomy can be traced back all the way to the Indus Valley civilization. Some of the early Indian astronomers include Aryabhata, Bhaskaracharya, Brahmagupta, Varahamihira and others. These astronomers lived between the 4th and 6th century AD. The work of Aryabhata called Aryabhatiya is perhaps the most important work of that time. For example, in this work Aryabhata had argued that earth is spherical and he had given an estimate of the circumference of earth. This work also mentions the movement of earth, particularly the rotation of earth as the reason for the movement of stars and the sun that we observe. The ancient astronomers used only basic instruments like the sundial to make their observations. The sundial consisted of a vertical rod attached to a horizontal plate. Using this sundial, they could measure the latitude of the place where they were observing and also the time when they were observing. Astronomy has evolved over time into a very sophisticated field of physics. Modern day astronomers use telescopes to observe various celestial objects. You may have heard about the Hubble Space Telescope. You may have also heard about the Chandra X-ray Telescope. In India, for example, we have the Hanley Telescope situated in Ladakh, which has been used to observe the celestial objects. We also have the giant meter wave radio telescope at Pune, which has been used to observe the celestial objects using radio waves. So far, we have seen what celestial objects are. We have seen some of the examples of celestial objects. We have also seen what astronomy is and what astronomers do. Now, here is an assignment for you. List all the objects you can see in the sky. Careful, do not look into the sun directly. What are these objects that you see in the sky? Where do these celestial objects come from? Who puts them th in the sky? We will learn answers to all these questions in this chapter. To begin with, we said that celestial objects are natural objects or naturally occurring formations in the sky. You can easily identify what natural objects are. Do you know what natural formations mean? Natural formations are various shapes 
geometrical figures that you can imagine using the celestial objects using the stars for example. We will study more about the natural formations later on. Let us now look at the celestial objects one by one. We will begin by studying the moon. The moon is the largest celestial object you can see in the night sky. Moon is considered as the natural satellite of the earth. How does this moon look like? During some nights you can see the moon as that big shiny round object in the sky. During some nights you see that the moon vanishes completely. During some nights you see only the portion of the moon. Why is this so? Before we proceed to know why the moon changes its shape, here is an assignment for you. Look at the moon on consecutive nights for a period of two weeks. Note down the shape and relative sizes of the moon on each night. Why do you think the moon changes its shape and its size? Let us see. When the moon is it at its roundest, it is called the full moon and the corresponding day is called the full moon day. The size of the moon and its shape changes. The size actually goes on reducing day by day after the full moon night. And on the 15th night, you see that the moon has completely vanished. This night is called the new moon night. The various shapes of the moon that you see in between new moon and the full moon and the new moon and the full moon themselves are called the various phases of the moon. The phases of the moon appear pretty regularly. In fact, a new moon appears once every 29 days approximately. So does the full moon. The phases of the moon appear so regularly that we can use them to keep track of the time. In fact, our ancestors did the same. They used the movement of the moon to construct calendars and almanacs. The calendar constructed using the movement of the moon is called the lunar calendar. A lot of festivals are celebrated using the lunar calendar. In fact, a large part of our country celebrates its new year based on the lunar calendar. Now here is an assignment for you. Can you think of any other system of calendars? Make a list of these various calendars that you can think of. Also explain on what are these calendars based. Why does the moon change its size and shape every day? Let us try to understand this. You have studied where the moon gets its light from, haven't you? That is right, moon does not have its own light. It reflects the sunlight that falls on it and hence you see that during full moon night sometimes the moon appears yellowish. This also means that we cannot see that part of the moon on which the sunlight does not fall. We saw that the moon takes approximately 29 days to go around the earth. On the new moon night the moon will be present between the earth and the sun. Hence, we will not be able to see the sunlit side of the moon. On the other hand, during the full moon, the moon will be present directly in front of us, which means the sunlit side faces us and hence we will be able to see the entire moon. Between the new moon and the full moon, the moon keeps on moving towards the east and we get to see the various faces of the moon. When the size of the moon grows, we call it the waxing moon and when it shrinks we call it the waning moon. These phases of the moon are a good example for natural formation. In addition to moving around the earth, the moon also rotates about its own axis just like the earth rotates about its axis and hence moon also has its own sunrise and sunset. Interestingly, the number of days taken by the moon to move once around the earth is the same as the number of days taken by the moon to rotate about its axis, which means we get to see only one side of the moon. The far side of the moon is never observable from earth. You might also be interested in knowing that moon has no atmosphere, which means we cannot hear any sound on the moon. The surface of the moon is dusty, it is barren 
and it contains a lot of craters and mountains. How do we know these things? We know these things because of the observations we have been doing since a lot of time. Recollect how we talked about telescopes that were used by astronomers. Similar telescopes are used by the scientists to observe the surface of the moon. We have also sent various missions to the moon. Do you know we have also sent humans to the moon? The first such moon landing happened in the year 1969. Try to find as much information about that as you can. We have also sent various robots to the moon. India very recently sent the Chandrayaan mission. The first such mission by India was the Chandrayaan 1 which was sent to the moon in the year 2008. The second mission happened in the year 2019. So, here are a couple of activities which can be helpful in understanding various phenomena associated with the moon. Now, you know that the moon revolves around the earth and takes 29 days. Now, we will understand two more natural phenomena and these two natural phenomena are solar eclipse and lunar eclipse. A solar eclipse happens when the moon comes in between the sun and the earth. They align in straight line such that the moon restricts the sun rays from falling over the earth. Thus, from earth what we see is that the moon is blocking the sun and that is what solar eclipse is. On the other hand, a lunar eclipse happens when the earth comes in between the sun and the moon such that the earth blocks the sun rays from falling over the moon. Thus, the earth shadow fall over the moon and from earth it appears red. This is what we call lunar eclipse. To understand this, let us do a demonstration. Here we will assume the globe as the earth and the light source as the sun and the tennis ball as the moon. When the moon is between the sun and the earth, can you see the shadow formed over the earth? This is the reason where people experience solar eclipse, while the rest of the people will not. Since the moon is much nearer to the earth and sun being much larger in size, but much much far away from the earth, from earth both appears of the same size. Thus, from earth what we see, the moon envelops the sun. On the other hand, when the earth is between the moon and the sun, the shadow of the earth falls over the moon and thus it appears red. This is what we call lunar eclipse. Then you might be thinking that on every new moon day there would be solar eclipse and every full moon day there should be lunar eclipse. But there is a catch. The orbit around the earth on which the moon revolves is actually tilted few degrees north south with respect to the earth's axis. To understand this, assume this disk as the orbit of the earth, but it is being tilted few degree north south. So, it is revolve around this earth something like this. Can you see the shadow not falling over the earth? So, not every new moon day there is a solar eclipse and not every full moon day there is a lunar eclipse. For what to happen? So, not every new moon day or full moon day all three align together. Only under certain condition and region we experience solar eclipse and only under certain condition we experience lunar eclipse. Here is a curiosity question for you. Why does the moon appear red in lunar eclipse? You may take the help of your teacher or you may need to read the chapter light. To understand it better, take reference of library. So, today we have seen what celestial objects are. We saw some examples for celestial objects. We also saw what astronomers do, what astronomy is and some of the tools used by astronomers. We studied about the moon the various properties of the moon like the phases, the eclipse, we also saw what the atmosphere of moon looks like, 
the craters formed on the moon among many other things. In the next class we will study about the stars, till then take care, bye.